Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh with FatIsNotYourFault.com. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to evaluate your blood sugar and insulin management. And this video is critically important because blood sugar mismanagement today is of almost pandemic proportions in the industrialized countries. And in fact, here in the US, it's been predicted that diabetes alone can bankrupt the entire healthcare system in the next couple of decades. So we really need to be able to manage our blood sugar, but we don't know what to manage unless we really know what's going on in the first place. So here's how you evaluate blood sugar. Now the easiest way, the, the most simple way that we'll start with is with a, a standard blood chemistry. On a blood chemistry, you have markers like glucose, for example. Glucose, generally speaking, if above 100, can indicate that maybe you have an early blood sugar uh, mismanagement disorders, like insulin resistance from metabolic syndrome or prediabetes, for example. But glucose is not the best marker, and here's why. Glucose is very transient, meaning it is very responsive to stress. And if you go down on a fasting blood sugar in the morning to the doctors, and let's say you get in a fight with your spouse, or let's say you got a traffic ticket, or you almost got into a car accident, or let's say you absolutely hate needles. Any of those things or all of those things can cause a stress response. Now, what will your glucose be in that situation? It's impossible to say. It might end up being low because your body has already dealt with it. It might be really, really high, or it may even be normal. So glucose is a good marker to start with, but if it's normal, that doesn't rule out that there is not some kind of blood sugar mismanagement issue. The next thing to look at then is cholesterol. Cholesterol is something that everybody knows about, but the number one cause of elevated cholesterol is high insulin. That's because insulin, to, insulin upregulates the enzyme responsible for cholesterol production in your body. So again, there's an enzyme that your body uses to make cholesterol. Insulin makes that enzyme work better. So if you have high insulin, that enzyme is working stronger and better, you'll have high cholesterol. So high cholesterol is a pretty good indication that you may have some kind of blood sugar issue. Also with cholesterol, you may see your HDL go down, and high cholesterol might be something about, above 200, for example. HDL might be something lower than 50. The other thing to really consider, though, is triglycerides. What we'd look for is a cholesterol triglyceride ratio of two to one. So if somebody has a cholesterol of 100, an optimal triglyceride level would, would be 100. So 200 to 100 would be a two to one ratio of cholesterol to triglycerides. If somebody has a total cholesterol of 200 and triglycerides of 200, then you're looking at likely insulin resistance. So the closer the triglycerides are to the total cholesterol, that could be an issue. Now here's another one though. If somebody, let's say somebody has a total cholesterol of 150, that looks good, right? There are reasons why it might be low, um, other than uh, blood sugar issues. But if somebody had a triglyceride level of 150 and a total cholesterol level of 150, even though that's a good, healthy cholesterol level, that is likely insulin resistant, simply because it's less than a 2 to 1 ratio. Now, the next step after looking at a standard blood chemistry is to look at more advanced markers, like hemoglobin A1c. Hemoglobin A1c is a better marker, simply because this glucose looks at your moment-to-moment -moment blood sugar levels. Hemoglobin A1c is considered to be a three-month marker of blood sugar management. The reason why is hemoglobin is something that's found inside red blood cells. Red blood cells have a lifespan of 120 days or about three months. So anything that's evaluating your hemoglobin is really looking at a three-month period of time. Your hemoglobin A1c, therefore, is a three-month indicator of blood sugar management. Generally speaking, we like to see hemoglobin A1c at about 5.3 or 5.4. If it's within this range, chances are you have a, a pretty good blood sugar management. Another thing to consider looking at is insulin itself. Now here's the problem. Insulin is not a good marker. Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas that has a very short half-life, meaning it gets cleared out of your body relatively quickly. However, at the same time that your, body, your pancreas is making insulin, it's making something else called C-peptide. C-peptide is made in the same quantities and the same amounts as, you, as your body makes insulin, but it has a longer half-life. So if you're curious of what your insulin levels are, then perhaps you instead want to look at C-peptide. If C-peptide is high, chances are you're having an overproduction of insulin as well. If your C-peptide levels are normal, then chances are your insulin production is normal as well. 
Now a caveat to this is usually late stage insulin resistant metabolic syndrome or even diabetics will tend to have low insulin levels and low C-peptide, which is not a good thing and that usually indicates that your body is not able to make these things anymore. So here's a few markers. I'm going to do one more uh, video on the best uh, blood sugar evaluation tool that you could possibly have in another video, but I hope this, uh, you found this helpful. Thanks.